That brings us then to the next question. We've got these two exciting uh, drugs, targeted therapies approved a few years ago, Everlimus and Sunitinib. They both uh, clearly been shown to improve progression-free survival. Uh, at what point would you start thinking about adding one of those in, or would you even decide to start one of those plus a somatostatin log as your, as your first-line therapy, assuming you have some evidence of progression? Well, um, I guess uh, something in between the two scenarios that you would describe would be the ideal positioning for either of the targeted agents. In other words, a patient with um, mild symptoms or relatively extensive disease, uh, but not no evidence of um, high proliferation activity or uh, imminent danger, that would be a situation where you would want to consider either Everlimus or Sunitinib. Um, if they're somatostatin analog naive, I'd probably start a somatostatin analog simultaneously. I think uh, you can combine otreotide or lanreotide with pretty much any drug. Um, and, um, you know, whether that's, that's the right choice or not has never been, you know, evaluated in a clinical trial, but uh, I think it's probably a good, you know, it probably helps prolong the time to progression at least to, to add the two drugs together. And Diane, in, in your practice, how do you think about the, the sequencing question, or, or would you also sometimes use both of these, or all of these drugs together? Or is it guys Everlimus plus octreotide or sunitinib plus right. octreotide? or another somatostatin analog. Right, so I, I, in the functional hormone secreting tumors, obviously I always start the octreotide and sometimes if their disease burden is more than I want, I'll start a targeted therapy at that same time as well. Um, you could argue if you just started the targeted therapy that perhaps you didn't need the octreotide because by um, having efficacy of the treatment, you may in fact control the hormones. In a non-functional tumor, I, I don't tend to do that. I think it's um, the rare scenario. So often I'll, I'll try to always start with somatostatin analogs, again, as John alluded to or discussed before, that they're just better tolerated. Um, but if it's a tumor that's a little bit more intermediate grade, um, the burden is a little bit more than I'd like. Often, you know, targeted therapy is not um, a bad option. The intermediate grade ones in particular that I'll, I'll try to consider either Everlimus or Sunitinib. And I typically do it first as single agent by itself and then you know, if we get good response, then sort of think about somatostatin after that. Let's say they're on a somatostatin analog. Would you continue it when you, uh, let's say they progress, but Upon not... disease progression? Uh, let's say mild disease progression. So they're not blowing through the somatostatin analog. They're just progressing slowly. Would yeah, you continue I it? Do, I do typically keep it on if it's mild disease progression. But, um, you know, if it's really starting to have a, a disease progression on the order of a centimeter or more, for example, I, I have to believe that the somatostatin analog is not doing what I want it to do. I would point out to answer John's earlier comment that we don't really have a clinical trial to answer this question is that we actually are conducting Cooperate 2, which takes patients with progressing pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors that are advanced or unresectable, and they're being randomized to Everlimus, which now based on Radiant 3 is, is, would be a perfectly good standard, uh, plus or minus Passereotide, which is a uh, somatostatin analog that has a different affinity and binding profile than does octreotide or lanreotide. And so we completed accrual on that trial very, very rapidly. It's actually close to uh, accrual, and we're waiting for it to mature. And I should add, most of us are, are most, more familiar with octreotide. It's been around a long time. We now do have the clarinet study uh, with lanreotide. Um, do, do any of you see major differences in, in efficacy, or do we know if there are differences in efficacy between octreotide and lanreotide? Well, we know biologically they're very similar. Uh, they both uh, have very similar somatostatin receptor subtype binding affinities. Uh, there was an old European study from the 1990s uh, looking at control of the carcinoid syndrome, starting with half the patients started with octreotide, half started with lanreotide, and then they crossed over, and there didn't seem to be any difference between them. Um, and now we have two separate anti-proliferative studies, the PROMID study and the CLARINET study, showing that both of them prolonged time to progression. So my sense is they're probably quite interchangeable. Um, the, the studies have had different eligibility criteria, but I think they're probably very, very similar. And as Diane pointed out earlier, the method of administration is slightly different, octreotide being, octreotide LAR being an intramuscular drug and lanreotide being a deep subcutaneous drug. So in contrast to that, so you have two somatostatin analogs that seem fairly similar in terms of their profiles. Uh, we have two other agents, Everlimus and Sunitinib, that if you look at the trial data, look like they have perhaps similar efficacy. 
but they're very, very different drugs. Are there certain patients where you are more concerned about using one or the other of these drugs in terms of comorbidities? Uh, Diane, let me start with yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. So I think um, in terms of the efficacy, I completely agree. Um, I don't feel strongly at all that one is better than the other. Um, in terms of the side effect profile, they are different, and that's basically how I decide on which uh, therapy to use for, uh, for a patient. So for example, a patient with perhaps poorly controlled diabetes, um, I may opt to try Sutin first because of the risk of hyperglycemia with Everlimus. Um, in a patient with high blood pressure, for example, it may be better to opt with the Everlimus first. Um, while you're on that, try to get better control of the blood pressure uh, and then keep the Sutin for um, you know, second line in that situation.